What's up, everybody? This is your boy, Kamal, and today we're going to be raising one matrix to another because, I mean, why not? We've already talked about the cosine of a matrix, and earlier we talked about the exponential function applied to a matrix. That was the matrix exponential, and I did one explicit video on, well, not that kind of explicit, but that's for, that's for another platform. So it was the logarithm of a matrix that was evaluated explicitly. That's the correct language to use. So why not? Take one matrix and raise it to another. That does seem incredibly interesting, as well as quite problematic. It's interesting because, well, it, it looks pretty dope. I mean, this this is cool as fuck, man. But it is it is problematic in terms of the mathematical formalism we're going to have to apply here. So we could define this in analogy to how we re relate exponentials and logarithms to exponents, right? So if we have a matrix A raised to a matrix B, we could define this as e to the b times the logarithm of the matrix A. Or we could define it as e to the logarithm of matrix A times the matrix B. And the reason this is not clearly defined is, well, matrix multiplication isn't commutative. So that's a problem here. How do you define it? Is it B times log A up there, or is it log A times B up there? You'll get different answers, and we'll return to this concept later on in the video. So let's just evaluate these two cases, and then look at a case where they could, where a matrix raised to another matrix could be well defined. So we're going to talk about this example up in front of you here where this thing here would be the matrix A, and this thing here would be the matrix B. So I'm interested in the logarithm of the matrix A. Now, I have talked about how to apply logarithms and exponential functions to matrices using series expansions, and that works for pretty much any holomorphic function. And it gets a lot easier when the matrix is diagonalized. So we're going to diagonalize the matrix first, and for that, I'm just going to take the matrix A and solve the equation A minus lambda I times X equals zero. So we're going to solve first for the eigenvalues lambda and then for the eigenvectors X. So for the eigenvalues, we solve the determinant of A minus lambda I equal to zero. So this implies that we have seven minus lambda, negative 4 minus lambda, 2 and negative 15, determinant of which is supposed to be 0. So now you have to expand the determinant. So what we have here is 7 minus lambda, and we can factor out a negative sign here. We have 4 plus lambda uh, plus a 30 equal to 0, and again we can play around with the negative sign here. Okay, so I gotta solve a quadratic equation, which I haven't done since the dark ages. Here we go. Uh, 28, I guess, and you're gonna have a negative lambda squared term. You'll, you'll definitely have a 7 lambda and a negative 4 lambda, so that's like a 3 lambda. Uh, negative 2 over here, you know, that's a pretty simple quadratic equation, so I'm not gonna embarrass myself here yet anyway. So this implies that lambda could be equal to 1 or 2. Okay, these are the two values of lambda that satisfy the equation, and these are eigenvalues. Now for the eigenvectors, we have one eigenvector for each eigenvalue. So we got first up lambda sub 1 equal to 1, and we solve the equation a minus 1 times i, which is just i, times the eigenvector x, x1 equal to the 0 vector. So we have what exactly was the matrix? It was 7. Yeah, so that's 7 minus 1. That's like a 6. Then we got a negative 5 down there, negative 15, and 2 times x1, x2 equal 0, 0. Everything looks good so far. And if you expand the left-hand side, you get pretty much exactly the same equation. So what we have here would be, so it's going to be x1 equal to 3 times x2. No way, it's going to be 2x1 equal to 
5 times x2, correct? And that's about it. So we set x2 as a free variable and just parameterize the thing as t. So x2 parameterized as t. x1 would be 5 by 2 times t. So let's just select a value t equal to 2 so, the, so that we get integers. And this implies that the first eigenvector is in fact, so it's 5 and 2. Okay, cool. And by the same token, you can solve for the eigenvector corresponding to lambda sub 2, which equal to, and in this case, the eigenvector x2 is indeed the vector 3, 1. So we have the matrix A diagonalized. We have A equal to, first of all, we need the matrix P corresponding to whose columns are the vectors x1 and x2. So we have 5, 2, 3, 1. Then the diagonal matrix, that's going to be first column reserved for, first entry reserved for lambda 1. That's 1 here, 2 down here, 0, 0. Then you need the inverse of 5, 3, 2, 1. Okay, cool. Yo, if anyone's wondering why I'm using so many curse words nowadays, well, this is just how I talk in, in general, to be honest. So, yeah, I'm trying to... Well, I have pretty much removed the filter from my YouTube videos, which is kind of cool, to be honest. Anyway, so we have the matrix A in its diagonal form, and it's pretty easy to apply holomorphic functions to matrices when they're diagonalized, because all we have to do is just apply the function to the entries of the diagonal matrix. So that means all we have here is just log 1 and log two. Okay, cool. So log one is just a zero, and we have the matrix five, two, three, one. And now we have zero, log two, zero, zero. And the inverse of the matrix is going to be what it has a determinant of negative one. So I'm going to have a negative sign out here. And the adjoint would be negative three, two here, one and five flipped over here. Okay, everything's looking good so far. And I can factor out the log 2 as well. So I have negative log 2 times 5, 3, 1, uh, 5, 3, 2, 1 times 0, 0, 0, 1. That's going to make life a lot easier for us. Uh, and some more stuff. So we have negative log 2 times. So you have a 0 here. Then you got a 3 here. Then you got a... Another zero here, then you got a one there, and then one, negative two, negative three, and a five. So we have negative log two. So we got a zero there. Uh, wait, that should be a negative six instead. And you got, what else, 15. Uh, yeah, negative two. And finally you have a five and we could just distribute the negative one here. So I got negative signs over here now. Okay, that's what the logarithm of the matrix A looks like. Now we're going to have to multiply it by B because A to the B was E to the B times log A. Well, that's the first way we're evaluating it anyway. So <clears throat> let me just multiply B and the logarithm of A. So you get log two, this constant term here, and the matrix B was in fact one, negative one, zero, two, and we have 6, 2, negative 15, negative 5, and we have log 2 times, that's like a 6 again, uh, negative 15. Oh. Why am I so nervous doing basic multiplication and addition? Uh, this has got to be negative 2. It's got to be negative 2, right? And I got 15 uh, minus a 10, that's... Five. Okay, I think I haven't messed anything up yet. Anyway, so this is B times the logarithm of matrix A. The next phase of the plan is to apply the exponential function to the matrix B times log A. And again, it's a lot easier to apply a holomorphic function to a matrix once it's diagonalized. So we're going to diagonalize this thing, and I'm just going to copy down the values I've already noted down in my notes here. So we have log 2 times the matrix 5, negative 3, 2, 1. 
By the way, how exactly do you read out your matrices? Do you read it role wise as in five, negative, negative three, two, one, or do you read it in the column form? And which version of reading out a matrix would be the normal versus the psychotic, the psychopath version of reading out a matrix? Let me know in the comment section. Anyway, so we have another matrix here, zero, 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 eleven. Again, that's gonna come in very handy. And now let's read it the other way. Five, two, negative three, one, inverse. Okay, cool. And now to apply the exponential function, but first let me take this log term all the way here so that we have five, negative three, two, one, zero, zero, zero. And using the properties of the logarithm, we have log two to the 11th power. Wow, that is pretty interesting looking matrix we got there. And uh, terribly sorry about that. We have now the inverse of this matrix. Let me just evaluate this really, really quickly. We have a determinant of 11. So we have a factor of one by 11. Again, terribly sorry about that. And we have one, five, three, negative two. So that's what B times log A looks like. And now to apply the exponential function, again, all we have to do is apply it to the elements of the principal diagonal. So that means the E and the logarithm just cancel out. And we have one by 11 times five, negative three to one times the matrix one, zero, zero, and two to the 11th power. Interesting. One, negative two, three, and five. Now for just a little bit of simplification, so we have one by 11, times you got a five over there and you got a negative three times two to the 11th power here and you got a two and you have two to the 11th power times one negative two three five okay and i'm just going to leave it in that way so that's e time e to the b times the logarithm of the matrix a okay that was extremely cool but what about the other way of raising one matrix to another that we discussed earlier in the video so it's time to keep things fresh and exciting by switching up positions like I would do in any pleasurable physical encounter with a woman. If I could ever manage to attract one to that extent. Comment F to pay respects. Okay, so we have E to the B times log A, and now we're interested in log A times B. And I'm just going to present the diagonalized version of this matrix, we have log two times the matrix 10, seven, three, one, zero, 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 one, one. Then we have 10, three, seven, one. Okay, cool. The inverse of that matrix, that is. And again, we take this log two term all the way here. And for the inverse of that matrix, what exactly do we do? The determinant would be negative 11. So we have one by negative 11, the matrix 10, three, seven, one, and we have zero, zero, zero. And again, using the properties of the matrix of the logarithm function, we have log two to the 11. And we also have this inverse matrix. Well, negative one by 11 is already factored out. And we have 1, 10, negative 3, negative 7. Okay, everything's looking good so far. And so this is log A times B. And now we have to exponentiate everything. So we have E to this thing. And we apply it to the elements of the principal diagonal. So we have negative 1 by 11 times 10, 3, 7, 1 times one zero zero again some cancellation two to the two to the eleven one negative seven negative three ten okay everything looks good so far once again and again just a little bit of simplification here <clears throat> we're gonna have ten then we're gonna have three times two to the eleven then we're gonna have seven then we have two to the eleven Okay, then 1, 3, negative 7, and 10. And you can expand the multiplications here to convince yourself that this is, that these two, uh, these two 
exponentials are not equal to each other, but it's pretty clear that you have two different matrices here. So in general, we have e to the logarithm of a times b not equal to e to the b, uh, no wait, it's, yeah, b times the logarithm of a, because, well, matrix multiplication isn't commutative. So it's not well defined here. The concept of raising one matrix to a different matrix isn't something that's well defined. However, what if we have a concept like a matrix A raised to itself? In that case, we have E to the log A times A being equal to E to the A times log A. So this thing is perfectly well defined, as is A to the A to the A any number of times. Or maybe not any number of times, but as many times as would work for a given matrix. This is a pretty interesting question, though. And another interesting question would be, what about the concept of A to the matrix B plus C? If we define A to another matrix in one way, let's say we define it in this way, we cherry pick this as the choice for defining one matrix raised to another, so would this be equal to a to the b times a to the c? Would this happen? Well, we have a to the b plus c, as per our definition, being equal to e to the b plus c times log a. So that means we have e to the b times log a plus c times log a, which is valid for matrices. We have the distribution of uh, multiplication over addition. But what about writing it as the product of two exponential functions? Well, for two matrices, if we have a, e to the a plus b, this would be equal to e to the a times e to the b if the matrices a and b commute. So if the matrices b times log a and c times log a commute with each other, then we could write this as e to the b times log a times e to the c times log a, provided they commute. So this would be, as per our definition, a to the b times a to the c. So yeah, that is pretty cool. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.